I am done with Ruin and Rising, and I am done with the Grisha trilogy. I thought when I started reading this, I was gonna breeze through it. And I'll say for this book, it, I feel like it just tread the same plot points to the first and second book, which is, it, it kind of is just the formula for this series. It has a certain beats, but it works. It maintains action. Well, a little bit of political intrigue. I feel like that was more the going in from the first to the second book. And the second book had more political intrigue. But this one was just a lot of action, getting ready for the big battle, for the big fight, for everything to go down. And honestly, that part did not disappoint at all. Like, just the climax didn't disappoint too much. I will say what kind of messed up the climax for me was the little plot twist that happened, which brings me to the characters. Alina's just still subpar and bland. I'm indifferent to her. Just, eh, she's whatever. She's around. She exists. And I just still don't really like Mal. I, I kind of get why people like Mal, but it was like... You know, he's just around or whatever. I don't know. I just didn't like him. But I think the reason, honestly, I didn't like him, which I probably feel like I understand why people don't like Alina. Alina as a character coming down to the end of the book, I realized that I guess she grows as a character in this book, but the significant growth and the real growth that she could have made kind of comes at the end of this book where she kind of understands and accepts herself, but she does it? I don't know. That's my problem with Alina. What, how I feel like Alina's story should have gone, she should have started out as this girl that like, uh, I don't think like, you know, I'm, I'm that pretty or I'm that great or whatever. And as the story continues, she just starts gaining more confidence and she gains confidence in herself because she's seeing that she's taking on all these tasks. Like she could start off with no agency and thinking like, like she doesn't deserve whatever. And then she goes through the chosen one trope and then realizes that not because she's a chosen when she's great but because the self-confidence that she thought she didn't have or as beautiful as she didn't think she was mal is telling her she's beautiful the darkling telling her she's beautiful i think genia told her genia told her she was yeah genia or genia still not sure i'll go with genia Genya keeps telling her like, oh, you're, you're, you know, you're so great, you're so beautiful. People are telling her that she's great. She has people following her and telling her that she's great. Nobody's saying that she needs to be arrogant and feel like I'm better than everybody. She could still be like, I'm feeling more confident about myself, but at the same time, like still having some self-doubt and being human. But also in the process, not just being so human that like, oh my gosh, I'm not worthy, I don't deserve this. There are moments when it's just like poetic passages about how unworthy or how messed up things are. And I'm like, and those moments kind of made me sad. Sleepy. I guess it's supposed to give us an idea of how she feels. It got real poetic and all of a sudden there'd be like little lines that I guess came up in like the first and the second book that I didn't remember that she would kind of repeat in this book because they were like something that Mal said or something that the Darkling said or something that she said before, something that um, Bagra said. And she would like repeat those in the middle of a thing because I guess it correlated to what was going on. But I was like, I don't remember that and I'm not really sure how this totally relates right now. And I kind of don't care about it and I don't care about half of the other stuff that you're thinking about just like give me the action I felt like these books needed more of like stick to the action and stop trying to be like really poetic about it telling me how she felt was just dragging the you see that's probably why this book is as thick as it is because I also feel like these books probably didn't need to be as thick as they are how much pages are they they're like 400 yeah about 400 a little more than 400 pages and i feel like they could have been like 300 because half the things that alina said unnecessary and this alina mal relationship very unnecessary because i didn't believe them from the beginning it was kind of set up like they were friends in the orphanage and then it got to a point where alina was attracted to him and she wanted to be with him but he was with all these other girls and all these other people and he wasn't paying no attention to her and then all of a sudden now that she's a sun summoner and she's in the little palace now he's catching feelings for her and he's so into her he's so jealous that the darkling is into her and and i'm just kind of like all of a sudden but he was feeling like bro before all of a sudden now he's like bae like well, this don't work this is not working for me and now lee's really selling like really trying to sell this relationship and it's coming off a smidge believable but i already have a sour taste in my mouth about their relationship that now i'm like i don't care there was a moment in this book because i said it after i read siege and storm i hated the parts that were their relationship and i was just like oh when it comes to this book i will skip any moments of their relationship mana here mana want it and it got to a point where they went into like this conservative 
story and they're having like some banter and I'm just like this banter is going on a little too long and there's no real action going on or anything and they're kind of like getting a little flirty and I was just like how long is this going on for and I just kept turning the page and there was like two three about four pages and I would just like skim the pages and realize that they're still talking and bantering they're being flirty and touchy and then all of a sudden I got to the end of the chapter and it's like she's like pulling his shirt over his head and I was like oh okay I'm not really missing much and I just went to chapter 17 and that was it that was it like I had no interest in that there was like three four or five pages of them having this I'm like I don't care about that this has nothing to do with me because why I hate their relationship and I hate the fact that this little plot twist involved their relationship. It's not fully about their relationship, but it's still like it involved it. I didn't like it. I hated it. We were going after the Firebird and now it's like, oh, it's Matt. I was like, where did this left turn come from? It was logical, I guess, because all of the pieces lined up. It just didn't have emotional resonance for me. Even when the effects of the plot twist came into effect at the end, I didn't feel emotional about that. I felt more emotional about the Darkling than I did about Mal, so it was just like... <sighs> I'm looking forward to seeing how I'm gonna feel about Mal in the Netflix series about the Grishaverse because I don't like him from this book. My feelings might change. It's, I don't like him. Alina's just indifferent. I don't care. She's just so regular. She's just so middle of the road that it's just like, you don't like her, you don't really hate her. You just kind of like, she exists. I'm here for the story. Ugh, whatever, girl, you ugh, kick rocks though. And most of the cast of the characters were great. They weren't like super, super developed. Like Tamar and Tolia, they were interesting, but they were still like not super developed. So it's just like, yeah, they're, they're, they're there. So I'm hoping that the actual Netflix series is going to be so much more than this book, like so much more than this book. And I've heard so many great things about Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. So that intertwined with this book for the TV series, I'm sure like, the actual TV series is gonna be way, 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 way better than this book. So I'm expecting that the actual Netflix series is going to be like an event and it's gonna be top tier television compared to this version that if it was an actual show on Netflix, like as it is, it probably would have just been like something you could like turn on, but it's not as memorable as you'd like it to be. It's no Stranger Things, you know? Besides that, as usual, I love the world building of this story. I love experiencing so much more of it. And I love the continuous motif within this story of glass, especially glass ceilings, big glass windows, large expanses of glass, and just like beautiful views. And it started with the library at the Little Palace, or I think it's the Great, whichever one. It started with the library with the sunroof. And in this one, there was like on the mountain and it's just like they were in this spinning wheel situation with like glass all around and it's on a mountain over clouds. Like the, the views, I tell you the world building, I'm like, I hope. Like it's Netflix, so they should be able to bring a lot of this stuff to life. But I'm like, oh, please bring it to life and make it look good. If they could pull off the get down, they can more than do Grishaverse. The world building is the strongest part of this story. Like even the little like, I don't know, the little blurbs in the back here, they're all pretty much allusions to the fact that the world building is the best part of this entire story. So now I am looking forward to starting Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. I will do my best to read them before the Netflix series. It's a lot of adventure. I just love the adventure of this story and I appreciated that so much. The relationship could have kicked rocks, you know, but I enjoyed it. It's just right in the middle. It's a great setup for Six of Crows. I'm looking forward to seeing how Six of Crows plays out. I heard it's strong on the character development. Reading the trilogy was more about understanding the world and getting a feel for the world and seeing what the world is like. So that now when you get into Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, you really get into the characters. But I'm looking forward to Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. Thank you for spending your time with me. 